Hey guys, um, this is the first video for Math 2400. Um, in this short video, we're talking about divisibility. Okay, so first off, we have a definition. If d and n are integers and d is non zero, and a multiple of d is equal to n, so like there's some integer k such that dk equals n, then we say d divides n. And if that's true, we, we write d with a vertical line and then n. Okay, for example, so we read this like d divides n, well, and one example would be like 5 divides 10. Um, and that there are, our proof of that fact is just that 10 is 5 times 2. Um, if we want to say that uh, D does not divide N, we write uh, the divide symbol with a stroke. So for example, seven does not divide 2,552. Okay. To see this, we just um, use long division. So we divide seven into 2,552. Um, you can work it out. You see, I've already worked it out. The quotient is 364 with a remainder of four. If the remainder was zero, we would see that 364 times seven equals 2,552, but the remainder is four, okay, so it doesn't divide. Um, to, um, and to see, uh, to see like a reason why it doesn't divide, like better than that, well, uh, we just need to know some basic properties about um, about the divides property, right? So one basic property is that if A divides B and A divides C, then A divides a combination of B and C, so BX plus CY, where X and Y are integers. And another thing is, is that if B is non-zero, then if A divides B, then the absolute value of A is less than or equal to the absolute value of B. And how does that tell us that seven does not divide 2,552? Well, suppose that seven does divide 2,552. Okay, then seven also divides 2,552 minus seven times 364. In other words, seven divides four, but if seven divides four, then the absolute value of seven is less than or equal to the absolute value of four. That would mean that seven is less than or equal to four, which is not true, okay? Well, if that's not true, then it's not, then also, um, seven doesn't divide 2,552. Okay. So that's how you can say that, um, you know, you can tell if a number divides another number by using long division. Okay. Now we want to know, I mean, sure, you can, if I give you two numbers, you can divide them. Um, but more generally, we want to know that uh, this process always gives us a quotient and remainder, and that it always gives us a uniquely defined quotient and remainder. Okay. Um, to prove that, we need to know this fact. Well, it's called the well-ordering principle. Um, alternatively, you could also use an induction. Okay, so this should just, let me just remind you what this means. Um, the well-ordering principle states that um, if I have a non-empty subset of the, of the natural numbers, then my set has a least element. Okay. So um, let's use this principle to prove that uh, the division algorithm always gives a, always works. Oops. Trying to change the page here. Okay. So let's start. So we're going to use the well-ordering principle to prove this. So we have the proposition called, this proposition is called the division algorithm. But really this proposition is saying that the division algorithm always works. You know, like using long division always gives you a quotient and remainder. So let's see what it says. If it says, um, if we have two non-zero or two integers with, oh, sorry, this should say with a non-zero, 
Then there exists uh, unique integers q and r, so q for quotient, r for remainder, such that r is non-negative and less than a in absolute value, and b equals qa plus r. And so it's just saying that we can divide b, we can divide a, or sorry, we can divide b by a and get a quotient and remainder. Okay, and often we need to know this um, in this course. So let's prove it. So b and a are given a is non-zero, and now we need our set S. And this is our set we want to have a least element. Okay, so it's going to be the set of all like possible remainders that are non-negative. Okay, so all of the things that look like b minus qa that are non-negative. Okay, and um, we want to choose the least one. Okay, um, we can only do that if this set is non-empty. So first let's show that it's non-empty. Well, kind of uh, to see that it's non-empty, no matter what b and a are, um, we can take q to be absolute value of b times the negative a, and then b minus absolute value of b times negative a times a is just b plus absolute value of b a squared. Okay, and this number is always positive. So this number is always in s. So this establishes that s is non-zero, or sorry, that, that s is non-empty. Okay. So um, the while well ordering principle states that a non-empty subset of the natural numbers has a least element, so let's take R to be the least element. Okay. We want to make sure that R satisfies the conditions of, of the division algorithm, meaning that it's less than A in absolute value. Okay, so for a contradiction, suppose it's bigger than A in absolute value or bigger than or equal to, Okay, then just take r prime to be r minus the absolute value of a, and notice that r prime is less than r, is bigger than or equal to zero, and it's of the, also of the form b minus qa. So it's in s, but it's less than r, and r is the least element. This is a contradiction. Okay, so our assumption that um, R is greater than or equal to the absolute value of A is false, so R must be in this range. And of course, by construction, R, QA plus R is equal to B, and, and, and we're done, except for I didn't show that um, Q and R are unique. So, um, so I'll just say, let me just omit. I will probably ask you to do that on an assignment or, or something like that. Okay. And one last topic in this video. Okay, we have to talk about a little bit about prime numbers. Okay, so we have a definition. Um, we start with an integer greater than or equal to 2. And it's called prime if its only positive divisors are 1 and n. So for example, 6 is not prime because its divisor, its positive divisors are 1, 2, 3, and 6. Okay, so it has more than just 1 and 6 as divisors. On the other hand, 5 is prime, its divisors are 1 and 5. Okay, so if a number greater than or equal to 2 is not prime, we call it composite. Okay, and uh, here is this is a diagram which can be, we can use to figure out uh, just by hand which numbers are prime, which are composite. This is called um, the sieve. Of Eratosthenes. I am probably saying that wrong. Okay, and let me just give you a little demonstration. Okay. So so we um, we ignore one. One is not prime or composite. Okay. So we look at the smallest thing. I haven't done anything to yet. So let's we we're gonna circle two. Okay. So um, we see that the only divisors of two are one and two. Okay. So two is a prime. 
Now, anything that has two as a factor is uh, not going to be prime anymore. So we're going to um, cross those off. Right. Then actually we can just kind of see a little pattern. Okay. All of these things are not prime. They're two times something. Okay. Okay, my next number I see is three. Its divisors are three and one. I know that two is not a divisor of three. Oh, I should use a different color. That is the whole point. Okay. Maybe we'll use green. Okay. I know that two is not a divisor of three. If it was, I would have crossed it out already. Okay. The only other things are one and three, so three is prime. Okay. Now anything that is a multiple of three is also not prime. So we're crossing out some old things and some new things. And now we look at our next number that's not crossed out is five. Now if five, five is a multiple of one, you know, five is five times one, but it's not a multiple of two or three or else it would have been crossed out already. Okay. So it also must be prime. We give it a circle and we cross out all the multiples of five. Because you know, ten is not prime. It's ten. It's five times two. So we're going to cross out all the multiples of five here. You see, we've crossed out some new stuff and some old stuff. Now again, the next thing that's not crossed out is seven. Seven must be prime. Okay, I guess I'll use this color. Okay, anything that's a multiple of seven is not prime. Oops, I did the wrong thing. I should have done 28. And actually from now on, um, there is nothing more to cross out, which I mean, you can check to see if you want, but I'm just going to use the same color for the rest of them. Okay. The next number that's not crossed out is 11. Think about what it means. Think about what it means for no more things to be crossed out. So the multiples of 11 are 22, 33, 44, 55, see 13, the multiples of 13 are 26, 39 and 52, then 65 would be the next one, we got 17, 34, 51, Three. Um. Okay. So we stop crossing things out because these numbers are too big. Now all of these circled things are all the primes up to 64. So you'll notice that um, you 
yeah, kind of the numbers that I wrote down, all the numbers up to 64, have something to do like uh, with when I had to stop, when I got to stop crossing out um, numbers off the list. Okay. Okay, so yeah, this is my list of primes up to, of at most six, uh, size at most 64. You know, we have 59, a bunch of them. Okay. And of course you could, um, you could make a table as big as you want. M more probably a better thing would be to just use a computer or something. Okay. And kind of one thing that is demonstrated by this, uh, by this table is this theorem. It says that every integer is a product of primes. In fact, there's a stronger theorem available. That is every integer can be written uniquely as a product of primes. But for now, let's just prove this because it is, uh, it's a, you know, not, not too, not too complicated. Okay. So we want to prove that every integer is a product of primes and this will be an application of the well ordering principle. Okay. So let S be the set of counter examples to this theorem. Okay. So the set of integers N bigger than one, which are not products of primes. And for a contradiction, assume that S is non empty and let N be the least element. And our goal is to reach a contradiction. If we get a contradiction to this statement, it must mean that S was empty. In other words, every integer greater than one is a product of primes. Okay, there's two cases. N can be prime or composite. If N is prime, well, N is a product of itself. So N is a product of primes. So that means that n is not in S, and that's a contradiction because n, we assume that n was in S. Okay, so in this case, we get a contradiction. Okay, we need to show that uh, we get a contradiction if n is composite as well. Okay, so if n is composite, well, it's, um, it's not prime, so it has a divisor that's not itself in one. So let's call it A, and then the other divisor B can't be one or n as well. So you have n equals a, b, where a, b are both bigger than one. Okay. And since a, b are both bigger than one, though also they are both less than n. Okay. So they're less than the least element of s, so they're not in s. Okay, so a, b are not in s. Well, that means that they um, are both products of primes. If they weren't, they'd be in s. Okay. a, b are products of primes. Well, then a times v is also a product of primes. Therefore, n is a product of primes, and that's a contradiction too. Okay, so both cases lead to a contradiction. And that proves that uh, this statement, oh, sorry, that, that's a contradiction to, this, to our assumption that s is not empty. So s must have been empty, and that's the end of the proof. And that is also the end of the video. Um, I'm going to make another video um, about uh, greatest common divisors coming up next. Uh, thank you for watching.